the time aspect is really important. So what happens and the difference in different types of headaches, so patients with cluster headache learn to advocate for themselves very early on, that if they don't speak up, they're dealing with this completely incapacitating, suicidal type pain that comes in these brief little episodes. So nobody's saying that you're crazy. You know, that doesn't usually attach to cluster, but with migraine, it tends very quickly to be pushed as just a headache. So these patients develop this stigma of, it's just a headache, so it's not valuable to talk about it. And there's so few options, and if something is kind of working, I guess it's good enough. So we'll hear this often when a patient says, it's okay, and you delve into it, they're like, I didn't think there was anything else. I thought this was it. I'm like, no, there's so many ways of managing this that you know we're not always at the end of the line and there's new and new things coming out so we can layer options in. So I think that sometimes we take I'm fine as I'm fine, but if you just ask that one more question, okay, you're fine, but are you happy? Are you being impacted by being fine? Are you missing things? Are you not able to pick up your kids? Are you on the couch that day because it's working but not quite well enough? If you just ask that additional question, it's helpful. The trouble with asking those additional questions is it, it takes time. We're pulling this out of the patient. They're not just volunteering that information. But if you build a culture of teaching your patients to advocate for themselves, I think that changes the dialogue very quickly. So what, what I've noticed over time is the more I've learned to ask these questions early in my relationship with these patients, that when they're coming in for follow-ups, they, they are advocating for better options. They're, they're having open dialogue about, that's great you have new prevention. I'm still not satisfied with my acute options. Let's talk about how I can better manage the migraines when I have them. And that's very different than when I first started practice and they would just sit there like, I'm okay, everything's great, everything's wonderful, and, and you're trying to pull it from them. So I do think there's a time forward aspect, and I always say that one to two visits in, sometimes six to eight visits, you're, you're doing the relationship building, you're getting them to trust that you are here to listen to them, and it takes that forward time, but if, you're, if your viewpoint is this is a person who's going to be with me for decades, six visits is nothing in, in the span of a lifetime of a patient. So you build that early, they learn that they can talk to you openly, and they'll start coming in and the visits actually start to go really quick in the future because they know, they just tell you what's, in, in, what's a problem right away and you're gonna work on trying to collectively fix that issue. So I think there is some time cost in the beginning of the relationship, but you gain that time back in the long run. And it's important to try to remember to put that in when you can. You're not gonna be able to do it for every patient every single time, but that try to manage that, at least some of the patients today, I'm gonna further delve and try to pull more from them. And then it just becomes a habit that, that's very easy for you to do.